So, do we have anyone from St. Louis? And those of you screaming at your screen saying, it's St. Louis, you're wrong. Because that's what I used to call it before I went there. And it's actually pronounced St. Louis in, where is it? I think it's Illinois. Pretty sure it's Illinois. It's also the home of Budweiser. Yeah, I was there a couple of years ago. Anyway, I just, I've got this thing where my wife and I, we just collect Starbucks mugs wherever we go all around the world. Literally, we have a cupboard full of Starbucks mugs. The first one away is Jakarta, Indonesia. But unfortunately, that got smashed. So um, we need to go back there and get another one, don't we? <laughs> or just go on eBay and get one. <laughs> right. So today I'm doing a bit of a special install, something I've never done before on one of these bikes. Now this customer has brought his bike to me. Now he is supposed to be bringing it to my new business premises, but that is being delayed and delayed and delayed. Just, is this a good forum to speak about professionals like solicitors just delaying everything? They take so much money from us, so much money, and they don't deliver on time. We had to cancel all our removal firms uh, last weekend. They were due to be out here uh, to, to do the second part of the job. And in the last, literally in the final hour, we had to say, sorry, it's not happening. But it, it will be, but we just don't know when at the moment because there's problems going on at the bottom of the chain. We're sorted, our solicitor's done his job fine, great. He's done a great job, it's people at the bottom. Anyway, enough about that. <laughs> So we're sticking an S4 bundle on here to start off with with the Can Smart, but he's got a heated jacket, heated gloves, he's got a wireless phone charger. What else has he got? He's also got a, a tire, a tire pump in his in his back box that he wants to occasionally plug in to the bike. So he's got a lot of things going on where he wants to get power from the battery. Sometimes he wants constant power, sometimes he wants switch power. Now, you've seen me in previous videos talking about the Power Hub 2 by Denali. Also, Inov do a Power Hub 2. It's the exact same thing in Power Hub 2, very confusing. It's actually a pretty good product, the Power Hub 2 from Inov. The reason I love this product is because it's so small. It's the same size as, as the DC converter you get with the K2. The only downside to it, which a lot of you might be okay with, is that you still got an individual fuse on every individual circuit. So if a fuse blows, you've got to find a replacement fuse. But the size of it is fantastic. And when it comes to the BMW GS, there's not a lot of room under the seat, is there? So we, we do struggle a bit. So for that reason, I've got this on the website. I'll put a link down below to the Power Hub 2 bite in of, I am now stocking these and they are a very, very good price if you are wanting to basically tidy up all of your accessories. But today, we're not fitting one of these. Today, ladies and gentlemen, we are fitting the PDM60 by Row Electronics. Now, a lot of you will be watching this and thinking, well, they've been out for years, and they have been out for years. I've kind of like only just discovered them. I've known about them for years, but I've kind of like just started embracing these because they are fuseless. They are basically circuit breakers but they are expensive. So they're more expensive than the Power Hub 2 by Denali. They're more expensive than the Power Hub 2 by Inov. Why? Because it's just better tech. It's a completely solid state little box. It's small enough to put under the seat, even in the low position. Actually, let me just correct that. You can have it low at the back, high at the front. If you want to put it under the seat on top of the ECU, you can't have it low at the front and low at the back. There's probably not enough room to fit that in there, but it can go under the ECU. There's enough room to squeeze this under the ECU, but you won't be able to see all the display that's on there. That's the, the only thing with that. So these are really fantastic, and I'm going to be fitting these to a lot of bikes going forwards. I've actually called Row and I've already ordered a job load of these. So I've got now I've got a trade account with Row over in America, and I've got loads of them coming in because I know these are going to be really popular. So I'm going to attach it to this bike and show you how it all works. But the beauty of it is, if you haven't heard about them before, is you can pr literally plug it into your computer. That's, oh, by the way, that's one of the downsides to this. You can't plug it into a Mac. There are a few forums out there which are saying there's a beta dashboard software for the Mac. I can't find it and Rogue aren't telling me there is. So you still have to plug it into a Windows PC. I'm 
I Mac all out. So I've had to borrow my wife's work computer. You literally download the software, it comes up with a page like this. You literally select what you want on what circuit and you can decide whether you want to have constant power or switched power. And you can even go to the extent of having switched ground. Now, I can't see any point for that for me. For Maybe in the future I might be looking at using that and it obviously does have its benefits. But for what we're doing here, we're just looking for constant power and switched power. You can see exactly how I've already programmed everything up. Now you can actually go on to pdm60.com, download that software, download the dashboard, and program your PDM60 without you even owning a PDM60. Kind of weird, isn't it? So the whole idea of it is you program it, and then you plug it into here, and then you hit the program button, and it literally zaps all the information you saved on that dashboard into this. I'm now going to wire this all up. I'm not going to show you step by step exactly how it's all, all connected. But as you look at it, because all you see is lots and lots of wires. Well, I can tell you right now, six of these wires are just positive for six different accessories. And then you've got the main red one, which is going straight to the, the positive terminal battery. And then there's a ground on there and now every single wire it's, it's, you, don't, you don't have to guess or look in look even look on the instructions is actually written on the wire itself so there's your ground wire and then there's uh, your switched ground and you've got your switch live and then the other six are all the circuits but they're all different colors and it's really really easy to connect so i'm gonna zap this on the bike now so you can see it working one other thing is the CanSmart from Denali, that's a 30 amp fuse, and you can only top out on these at 15 amps per circuit. So the Denali CanSmart will still be connected directly to the battery. This will then go directly to the battery, and nothing else. Oh, no, hang on a second. You can't charge your battery using an Optimate through this. So the only things going to the battery are gonna be this, the can smart and charging terminals going to a dim plug so the customer can still charge his battery up directly. Um, so let's crack on and get on with it. Oh, by the way, it's completely waterproof. So even the, the little uh, the port at the back where you plug, you plug in the USB, even that is completely waterproof. This stuff is tough. You can even mount it externally to your bike, which I've seen on some bikes, but we, we don't want to be doing that. And then all the little lights at the top well, when it's working, they're all going to be green in colour. But if there's ever a problem, instead of a fuse blowing, you'll see it go to red. And that will signify that circuit has got a problem, that that device, that accessory that you've got actually on that will have an issue. So then you can go and sort that issue out, turn the ignition off on the bike, turn it back on again, that resets all the circuit breakers, and it should all go to green again. Oh, and the other thing, you can time it time it when it powers on. It's up to you whether you want to go from zero seconds up to 30 seconds, or, or even more. Uh, but you can see it on the drop down when you're on the software, and you can select how soon do I want this powering up after I fire my ignition up on the bike. Now, why would you want to do that? Well, because maybe you want to preserve all that power from the battery to actually start the bike, to actually turn the engine over, and then you can delay all of those accessories you've got on your bike coming on, maybe five, I think I've set this guy up to five, five or six seconds. So when he turns his bike on, his phone won't start charging, his, his jacket and his gloves won't start heating, but they will after a, a short delay. And the customer can change that as and when he wants just by plugging it back into his computer and, um, and adjusting that. And we've also got a delay when you turn the bike off. So if you want to, I've set this to 30 seconds for the customer. So when he turns his ignition off, all of these switch lives, they'll all stay on for 30 seconds. So his phone will keep charging for 30 seconds and his jacket and his gloves will, stay, will still keep heating for 30 seconds, which is a pretty cool feature. But you can turn that off. It's all, it's, all, it's all programmable to your specification. Right, let's get going, shall we? Okay, so try and ignore all the wires, okay? So remember that big red wire? If you look what I've done, it's coming across, across the top here, down into the side of the battery casing at the top here and it comes down through the side. So I've pulled the battery out, as you can see there, and I've connected it directly to the positive battery terminal. So I haven't gone to the positive on the front, which we're all used to seeing. I've gone to the posi there. So it just keeps the whole connection nice and tidy. 
Has this ever happened to you where you've taken your bike apart and you've got that many screws just sitting around and you have no idea where they go? Well, don't worry, I've got a link up here. Click on it, it'll take you through to the video exactly how to strip this bike down and put it back together again. So if you've got that tub of screws and they all look different, you don't know where they will go, well then have a look at that link and it'll show you exactly where every screw goes on your bike. Okay, so here's the big test. I've got the seat on the high position at the front and the low position at the back. This is a very, very popular setting. I use this setting myself. It keeps you back in the saddle rather than it keeps sliding towards the tank. So if I put this, the front seat on, there, and I go down, you should hear kind of two clicks as it passes the first clicker, the first lock. So there's one, and then the next one, there you go. It fits all the way down. Okay, I'm now gonna try it on the low setting at the front and the low setting at the back. I can't see how this is gonna work. But let's give it a go. Uh, right, it's already touching. It's already touching the PDM60. It just goes to show there's hardly any room under the seats on a GS. It Okay, so let me talk you through this install. So as you can see, we've got the PDM60 on here. The, the ignition on the bike is switched off and this is what you have. Now, a lot of people may be thinking, well, um, isn't that gonna be draining the battery? And the answer to that is, well, yes, over a very long period of time, but these are LEDs, they're, they're not light bulbs, they're, they're not drawing masses and masses of voltage. Now, some of you out there who have already got PDM60s fitted to your bike, you probably don't have any lights coming on at all and there's a reason for that. As it is right now with the ignition turned off, as you can see, I've got a green light on number one, I've got a green light on number five. Now going back and looking at the settings that I programmed onto this, you'll see one and five, I've got that set at constant power. So the things that I've got connected to this bike, connected to this PDM60, one, I can tell you right now, is the K2, which requires constant power. Wait, actually it doesn't require constant power, but um, but if you, if you look at the instructions where when, when you set it all up, it, it recommends constant power. So we're gonna have that on constant power. That's a whole another video I can get into uh, with, with regards to whether you have constant power on the K2 or not. And then number five, I've got that going to a little SAE, -S well, yeah, uh, it's, it's a power plug on the side of the bike. And that is so the customer has requested he can access power from the battery, even with the bike turned off, in case he wants to use his tire pump. He's got a tire pump in his top box and he wants to be able to access power without turning the bike on. So that, that that's his prerogative. If he wants that, obviously he can turn the engine on if he wants to, but he has got a constant live power on the fifth channel just there. The fact we've left them as constant power that is the reason why the other ones and, and why the whole unit is still lit up even when the ignition is off now if we left it as default settings which is switch power for everything well then everything would turn off after the designated time that we program on it uh, so the default is seven seconds if you want 30 seconds or more, I've got this program to, I think I think I put it on 30 seconds. If they're all set to switched live, well then they would all turn off. But because we've got a couple of them on constant power, it gives you this orange light. So this, this status right now is absolutely fine. There's nothing wrong with it at all. Now I'm gonna turn the ignition on and you're gonna see after about five to seven seconds, they're all gonna go green. So turning it on now, all the power's gone away so you can start the engine and then they come on. So now that's showing me all six channels are working. Now I've already tapped into four channels. Now the reason being, I was going to take my switch to live for the K2 to ch channel six. The only issue with this, it's not really an issue, it's just that I found that when I was connecting the switch live from the K2, to the PDM, because we've got a couple of constant lives set up on the programming, because that's what the customer wants, well, those other four channels that have gone orange, they have the potential 
this is the wording that PDM60 that Roe use, they have the potential to still have six volts going through those circuits. Now six volts won't actually charge anything up, it won't actually turn anything on. Your accessories require 12 volts. However, the N of K2, the switch live, will stay on even on six volts. It doesn't need a lot. So I was finding that the K2 wasn't switching off. So I've still taken the switch wire, you can see this little yellow wire just here, coming around here. I've still taken that directly to a switch live on the bike, which I've already accessed anyway, because I, I need to obviously connect this to a switch live. So I've just tapped into the same, the same wire coming from here. I've tapped into, is it so the gray trigger wire, ignition trigger wire, I've tapped in the K2 wire into that wire. So we've got a clean, a very, very clean switch live for the K2. And I've said that in all my videos, you have to use a clean switched live for the K2 because a lot of people like to use it on the CanSmart and double up with the B6 rear light and it won't work. The switch live just won't work like that. So you have to use a very, very clean switch live. So, so we're doing that and everything's working fine. W what I've done here is You've got the main red wire going to the positive terminal on the battery. You've got the ground wire going to this ground bus here, which obviously goes to the, the ground um, pole on the battery. And then rather than connecting all of the grounds from every accessory to the battery, what we've done, we've got this, this ground bus wire coming here. And I've got all the grounds from every accessory this guy's got on his bike going underneath this cover just here. So I'll show you that. This cable here, this is for his heated accessories, his jacket and his gloves. I've just left that loose for him in a, in a loose kind of like zip tie, Velcro zip tie, so he can access that as and when he is using it. So I'll just tuck that there. So I've made the decision to put the PDM60 here if you put it at the back, it starts getting a bit too close to the, to the to the underside of the seat. So I'm telling you now, when you do this, bring it forward slightly, having the, the front position in high and the low, either in high or low, it will it'll do both as long as the PDM60 is pushed forwards. I've, I've brought the wires down here and all the connections are made under the ECU through little posi taps, inline posi taps. This braiding here, that is all the CanSmart wires and uh, the, the front K2 camera and the front S4 lights are going through here. We've then got the CanSmart cable. You can't connect the CanSmart to the PDM60 because you can only go a maximum of 15 to 20 amps on each circuit and the CanSmart requires 30 amps. So the only thing is going to the battery are the CanSmart and I've also on the side of the bike down here, I've got the the DIN plug relocation kit. So this customer has decided to have the double USB at the front to replace his DIN socket. So I'll put the DIN socket here so he can charge the battery directly because the PDM60 doesn't have the facility for you to charge your battery through it. Probably can, but it advises not to. So we've got a very, very clean supply coming from the side DIN plug to the battery without going through the PDM60. So is this a familiar sight under your battery cover where you're literally hiding hiding all this, trying to find space for all your fuses? Well, we can get rid of all that now. So there's a link down below in the description where you can buy this. I've got plenty in stock. I'll be shipping them out. Christmas presents, whatever, for, you know, a nice Christmas present for your bike. But doesn't it look great? You know, you take your seat off and you see that. It just looks so damn good. Now this is an expensive bike. And by taking it off and seeing that sitting there, power distribution module, it's like, <laughs> and 60 amps, you know, you can just load this thing up, just go mad on it. I'm gonna wrap this bike up now and uh, the customer's gonna come and pick it up in the next hour. So I'm sure he's gonna be very happy with this, very happy with this. Oh, check out how the wireless phone charge works. It's a bit of a bulky old thing, but let me show you. Okay, so we're gonna turn the bike ignition on. Now bearing in mind, we'll. It, it won't turn on straight away. The PDM60 takes a while so we can start the engine, but then all of a sudden, now it starts to charge and there we are. So what did you think? Leave a comment down below. Give me a thumbs up, give me a thumbs down, whatever, whatever takes your fancy. Until next time, stay safe, fine bars, and I'll see you in the next video.